Hey guys, what's going on? Tim here. So, got another tutorial for you today, and today we are learning how to tie the monkey's fist. Alright, so I'm sure uh, many of you guys are familiar with this knot already. Uh, you've probably seen it in other tut tutorials and pictures. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to tie, and uh, it's pretty makes a pretty nice key fob or key chain, as well as, you know, the other uh, uses that it has. So I've got, you know, a couple examples here. This is a larger monkey's fist that I tied a long time ago, just, um, you know, just for fun. It's got a large, a steel ball bearing inside, and, um, yeah, this has got the five strands on each side, but today we're going to be learning how to tie the smaller one, and that's this one here. This is, um, just a three-strand monkey's fist, and there's a marble on the inside. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's get to the tutorial. All right, so I've got my paracord here. I've got about four feet of the burgundy, and I've got a plain old marble here. Nothing special about that. Okay, so the easiest way I've found to tie this knot is to kind of use your fingers as a bit of a jig. Um, some people, you know, build little jigs out of um, pieces of wood and whatnot, but you can do this with um, your hands. So what I like to do if I'm using, if I'm tying a smaller monkey's fist, I can just use my first uh, three fingers here, or and you're going to start at uh, closer to one side of your piece of paracord. So I've got maybe about a hand length here. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to do loop over once like this. So you're going to do three passes because this is a kind of like a three pass monkey's fist. So one, two, three, like that, right? I just went over and under my fingers. On the fourth one, you kind of use your thumb to pinch this here, okay? Then now, now that you've gone this way, you're going to go this way around these uh, passes, okay? So you see I'm creating a gap here with my middle finger and my ring finger. I'm going to go behind, so behind here, and I'm going to go around here, through the back. So I went around through here, so I'm just going to pinch it there, pull it through, okay? So that's one pass. And I'm just going to do that three times. So again, around and behind. That's two passes. So you want to make sure, see how it's starting to go underneath here? You want to keep them lined up properly. So make sure your paracord doesn't, um, the loops don't get all out of whack. Okay, so now at this point I've got two passes. And this is where uh, the tricky part starts. At this point, you're going to insert your weight. So uh, see how I just kind of transitioned one finger out of there? I've kind of made the gap a bit bigger. I'm going to take my marble, and I'm going to place it in the center here. Just to give you a bit of a tip here, if you make this center part a little tighter, it'll hold the marble in place while you, after you remove your ring finger out of there. Because at this point, afterwards, you're going to start looping this way, and you have to, your finger will be in the way. So if you make this part just a little bit tighter, it can kind of help and hold that marble in place. Um, it may not work as well with a heavier weight because, you know, it'll just fall out. So again, I'm just doing one last third pass here. So having, you know, it is a little easier with a marble because the weight doesn't fall out so easily. So see how I'm kind of tightening it down pretty, giving it some good tension. That's going to actually hold my marble. So see, I'm just slowly removing my finger out of there and you have, should have something that looks like this. Okay, so my marble in the center. I've got passes three on vertically and horizontally. Now, I'm going to go horizontal passes again, but I'm going to go through this way. Okay, so let's go one. And uh, this will take a little practice, guys, to get right. So I've got one, and now I'm going to go through this way, right? So I'm going this way. Through the bottom loops. one pass. Now again I'm going to go through the top part again. It's pass number two. And then I'm going to go through the bottom. Can't really rotate this too much otherwise the uh, marble could fall out. I know it's looking a little messy but we're going to clean it up really soon. And uh, so you can see this is the top part loop I'm going through and this is the bottom. So now I'm doing my last pass through. One through the top, 
and then through the bottom again. It's getting a little messy here, no worries. Put this through the bottom. Okay. So you can kind of start to see the monkey's fist forming. Oh, and uh, I need to do one more pass. Yeah, this is the third one. Yeah, so a good way to check at this point is to make sure you have three strands on all sides. So you guys can start to see the uh, monkey's fist form. I see I've got three here, three here. Yep, three, three. Yeah, so it looks good. All right, so at this point, you're almost done. You're just going to have to cinch out all the slack. Okay, that's very easy. And if you end up with uh, uneven strands um, here, like these bottom two, you can always adjust that later on just by cinching more slack through the knot. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to cinch all these slack out. And this will just take a bit of time. So I'll just pay attention to all your strands and make sure that they are um, they're staying lined up. You don't want them to cross over and you start to tighten them. And they get uh, that could cause your monkey's fist to be tied improperly. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. Alright, so I've cinched out all the uh, slack out of my monkey's fist. As you can see, it's uh, quite nice and tight now. And just doing a quick look around, you can see we've got three strands on all sides, nice and even. Because uh, sometimes if you miss a pass or miss half a pass, you can end up with like a side with only two strands on it, and that doesn't look as nice. Okay? So, yeah, I think that's everything I need to tell you guys. Um, oh, one more thing. If your strands here are un uneven and you plan on, you know, tying this into a lanyard or a, uh, you know, key fob, you can take the longer side and cinch some of that excess all the way through the knot. It'll take a bit of time, but you can get that length onto the other side to lengthen one side and shorten the other, and you can even those out. And from there, you can, you know, tie, uh, finish off your key, key fob however you wish. And as you can see on my personal one here, I just did two snake knot weaves. Then I tied a, a diamond knot or you know button knot here. Then I just attached it to a key ring. Okay, so yeah, the um, you know possibilities are endless, and they're up to you. All right. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. And uh, yeah, have fun tying, guys. So. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next video.